tonight on The Local Live. The county sales tax increase could bring Mamaroneck and Larchmont over a million dollars in new revenue this year. The Friendly Village calls upon a seasoned veteran to tackle mosquito control. See how the county is making behavioral health services more accessible to residents. And the Westchester Children's Museum has hands-on exhibits, field trips, and much more. Good evening, it's Thursday, July 18th. I'm Stephanie Yang and welcome to The Local Live. Larchmont Mayor Lorraine Walsh told The Local Live the village will use some of the funds from the pending 1% increase to the county sales tax to supplement repairs to roadways and sidewalks to make the change more visible to residents. Between the three municipalities and two school districts, the community will gain over $1 million in revenue as a result of the Westchester County Property Taxpayer Protection Act. The sales tax measure is designed in part to ease the burden on taxpayers after the loss of federal, state, and local tax deductions. The Maranek Village consulted with Dominic Ninibaji, a former mosquito control superintendent from Long Island, to help improve its mosquito control system. And uh, over the last few uh, couple of months, I've worked with uh, primarily Dave Ballone, uh, who does the actual application in terms of uh, he knows how to apply pesticides because he has a, a business and basically what, so all I needed to do was really kind of orient him to, toward mosquito control and salt marsh mosquitoes. And the areas I initially flagged as likely sources uh, have, have been producing some mosquitoes. He's been uh, treating some of them. Matter of fact, he did a treatment this morning and uh, we're anxiously awaiting. I guess by tomorrow he'll know how effective it is. And uh, hopefully we can identify the sources and control them at their sources and really alleviate the, uh, the problem and particularly uh, alleviate the need for running trucks up and down the streets uh, spraying for adult mosquitoes. Uh, because you really the proper way to deal with mosquitoes is at the source. And uh, so far so good, you know, you may be throwing things at me in late August if things uh, don't work as we thought, but uh, I think we've made a good start. As of last week, certain areas of Harbor Island Park and shore acres were treated. Nini Baji's goal is to treat all standing water and puddles that are mosquito breeding sites. Westchester County's Health Department issued a heat advisory for yesterday, July 17th, and for this weekend, Saturday, July 20th, and Sunday, July 21st. The forecast calls for high humidity and temperatures passing 95 degrees. In a release, the health department warned against heat-related illnesses while offering tips on how to beat the heat, including drinking lots of water and avoiding alcohol, caffeine, and strenuous activity. Remember to also keep an eye out for the elderly and the younger members of the community, and to check out options such as local cooling centers at the public libraries and the Mamaroneck Senior Center. Over the course of three years, the Westchester Department of Community Mental Health has teamed up with the county's Department of Information and Technology to develop a searchable database of behavioral health service programs for the community. This high-tech online map and directory is guaranteed to help people easily find treatment centers near their homes. Here today to uh, talk about the launch of, a, of an effort through our Department of Community Mental Health, uh, uh, ably assisted by our Department of Information Technology, in this important area of identifying and providing more easily mental health services for those people in need. You will see that we've overlaid all of these services with a map of the Beeline bus system. So not only can you identify the service provider you want to connect with, not only can, in the case of Charlotte from the MHA of Westchester, not only can their care managers and their staff connect you with the other services you need, but you can find the way to get to the programs that you need to get yourself to. Very cost effectively, I might add. These are the types of projects the Department of Information Technology enjoys doing. This fulfills our mission, which is to help county departments effectively bring its services to the public. And this is a fine example of doing that. One of the biggest barriers for people to accessing help is not knowing where to begin or how to begin. And this gives a fast, easy resource for people to find something close to them and to access um, information about transportation. 
Over this year, we have called attention to the FCC rule proposal that could put funding for local community access stations, including LMCTV, at risk. The commission will vote on August 1st, and rules will take effect as soon as they are published in the Federal Register. There is still time to contact your members of Congress and have them stop the FCC from changing rules. LMCTV is a member of the Alliance for Community Media, a national organization that advocates, promotes, and preserves the right to media in support of diverse community voices. LMC Executive Director Matt Sullivan was at its recent national conference. The organization's president and CEO explained some impacts of the FCC's cable franchising proposal. What's at stake as a result of the FCC trying to rewrite the rules that Congress put forward in the Cable Act some 35 years ago? What's at stake is communities being able to get fair compensation for the use of their property, for cable companies to be able to have a license to make money, and for communities to have channels in which they can actually communicate with one another. In 2019, when we're seeing journalism being threatened, when we're seeing jobs disappearing, the one thing we can't end up doing is basically shredding those institutions, getting rid of those institutions, and eliminating the possibility for local people to actually see themselves in media. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. So, so. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could, go I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Larchmont Village kicked off their July 4th celebrations with the annual Flynn Park races. Officials, the volunteer fire department, and many family members participated in some friendly competition. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Hi, and welcome to the Larchmont 4th of July races. This is my 10th year actually doing this. And uh, it's always a good event. Lots of families, lots of kids. Great 4th of July races at Flint Park again this year. We had a wonderful time. I always look forward to the July 4th races. It's a great opportunity for families to come together and enjoy the village. See today we have a wonderful volunteer day. The volunteer firefighters are here serving hot dogs for the um, community. We just had a wonderful 4th of July races. Every year it gets better and better. We so much enjoy all of this, these events. It's a great way to kick off the holiday season and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.
Westchester Children's Museum at Playland and Rye has year-round activities featuring hands-on exhibits and programs for kids in pre-K through 8th grade. The Children's Museum is a nonprofit working in partnership with Westchester County to renovate a space and make it very creative as a family learning center. I think the most unique thing is that everything they see here they can touch. So most museums are like, oh, like hands off, like keep this safe, but we want them to engage fully. So they can move all the pieces around at every exhibit. They can come in and touch all the materials at the drop-in program. So it's all very hands-on. And in my opinion, that's the best way for kids to learn, not just to watch. One of the fascinating things about the location for this children's museum is it's part of the park here at Playland. And the diversity of the audience that we get here is just incredible. And since we've been open, we've had over 100,000 people visiting the museum from all backgrounds and from all parts of the county. So it really becomes a community center, a center for community engagement throughout Westchester. So we do um, weekly programs on Wednesdays and Fridays that are science-based with a craft. Um, so this month, we change the theme every month. This month, we're doing Einstein and Elvis, where we learn about the science behind music. And our whole museum is about the kids learning through um, experiences and the senses and play. So we have them play with the instruments. We have them feel out the different ways that they can play with the strings and the different amounts of water in the tubes. And then they get to make their own crafts at the end that they can take home so that they get to carry on the lesson they learned throughout the rest of their day. We like to look at Playland as a campus of activities. And one of the things the Children's Museum provides, it's really an extension of family fun here at Playland, but with an educational message. We try and work the lessons in a little bit subconsciously, and of course we sit down and play with them, but we really want the kids to be the guides through the museum, and the parents often learn from the kids too, because kids have a keen way of learning different ways that the parents don't know yet, so it's pretty cool to watch the interactions. We see parents and children interacting, we see grandparents and their grandchildren interacting, and it really is a fun experience, but a learning experience for the families. Found a bullet in the woman's body. It's one of ours. Someone in this department is playing us. I've got a pretty good idea who. Okay, in the past few months, there have been a lot of unexplainable deaths. They're on to us. We need to step up our game. They're going to find out that I'm Abigail Daniels. What if, wait a minute, Daniels, Daniela? I think that Daniela is Abigail. What are you doing here? I got the call also. It wouldn't be because you killed him. Either. Me Here's what's happening around town. Don't miss out on Larchmont's sidewalk sale. Local businesses will provide the biggest discounts on selected items. The next sales are on July 19th and 20th at 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Palmer Avenue. Mimaranek Town residents should set out trash and recycling by 6 a.m. this Friday. Early pickup is due to the extreme heat. Playland Park is celebrating communities with town days this summer. On Friday, July 19th, Larchmont Village residents can receive discount coupons upon entering the park. And on Wednesday, July 24th, residents of the village and town of Mimaranek will get the same perks. Join the mystery tour on July 22nd for a performance of Beatle Favorites by, hosted by Mimaranex Town's Recreation Department. The live band will be playing at Memorial Park at 7 p.m. And enjoy the last music in the park show on July 25th, starting at 6 p.m. This event is hosted by the Larchmont Committee on the Arts at Constitution Park. LMG Cast. <laughs> the whole system is hot. All right, cool.
I definitely would recommend doing podcasts if you are someone that likes to get something off the chest. So you want to just talk about anything in the world that just might interest you. Podcast here at LMC TV is amazing. I hope you're uh, listening out there. Have a news tip? Seen anything interesting around town? Is there breaking news in your community? Send your videos, comments, pictures, and tips to the local live, your news source of Larchmont and Mamarin. Remember, if you miss Thursday's live broadcast, you can catch replays of the local live twice a day on this channel and find story clips on our YouTube channel. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook to stay up to date on things you may have missed. We hope you're free next Friday evening for the fourth annual Tiki Invasion, an outdoor screening of Finding Nemo. Brought to you by LMC TV, Village of Amaranek Parks and Recreation, and Orange Bank and Trust Company. Thank you for watching The Local Live. I'm Stephanie Yang, and have a good night. If you are interested in sponsoring this or other programs